Welcome back to Financial Therapy. It's not just about the money. I'm personal financial planner, columnist, and financial therapist, Rick Kaler. Research tells us that 90% of all financial decisions are made emotionally, not logically. For nearly four decades, I've been helping people make better money decisions. So what makes my financial worldview different from most financial experts? I blend the nuts and bolts of financial advice with the emotions that drive making them. Good money decisions are not just about the money. So let's get started with today's episode. Welcome back for another episode. I thought I would tackle another problematic financial behavior that we outline in uh, Facilitating Financial Health, which is called financial denial. This is a pretty big topic, covers a lot of area. So I'd like to just uh, break it down maybe a little bit for you and help it uh, be a little more um, understandable and applicable to your life or others' lives. Denial is a term that we throw around a lot, and I, I think uh, it'd be good just to define that. You know, what is denial? According to the dictionary, it's the action of declaring something to be untrue. And that is simply an untrue statement, an untrue fact. And obviously, if we deny something, declaring that it's untrue, I think inherently <laughs> it's true, right? So I'd probably add to that declaring something to be untrue when in fact it is. And a, another definition of denial takes that into consideration. It says it's a failure to acknowledge an unacceptable truth or emotion or to admit it into consciousness used as a defense mechanism. Okay, so when I'm in denial, I, it's just like this. I do not want to admit that it's true. The fact that it could be true is unacceptable to me. And I think that really brings out some of the depth of denial. Now, I think part of denial is... If this is true, the pain is overwhelming or unacceptable. So kind of with that tee up, a financial denial is the, the denying the fact that something could be true, the fact that we don't want it to be true financially, or we're going to avoid it. So... Why do we do that? Of course, I think we've kind of fleshed out in the series of podcasts that underlying that is a really vulnerable part of ourselves, right? If uh, there was no emotion tied to this, and especially a difficult emotion, why would we ever want to deny it? We would accept it. Yeah, wow, boom, that's true. So it is this resistance that bubbles up within us that I cannot even imagine that. I am absolutely convinced that that's not true. But usually behind that, there is a huge threat. There is a threat that if this is true, it is going to be overwhelming. It's going to impact so many things. And so oftentimes what we choose to do is to avoid this, to not even deal with this financial troubling situation. And there was a survey of a thousand adults done and 36% of them admitted they avoided thinking about their financial difficulties. So, I think it, it stands to reason when we're avoiding thinking about anything that presents itself as a problem or a threat in any area of our life, that the consequences could be significant. 
And I'm not talking about giving in to free-floating anxiety. I'm talking about being willing to explore. You know, to be in denial, there's something that's popped up that's given me a reason to be denying it. Uh, some other research has shown that uh, financial denial behavior is associated with young people, people who are single, women, lower levels of education, lower income, lower net worth, and those that have revolving credit card debt. And I'm not saying that to, to cast aspersions on anybody. I'm saying that for whatever reason, people who are older tend to not be in as much uh, financial denial, married, now, why would that be? Why would married people not be in as much financial de denial? Well, that's probably because there may be somebody in your life that keeps reminding you of the problem, right? When you're single, there's there's not as much accountability. There, you don't have the uh, thorn in the saddle <laughs> reminding you of this. Women, I'm not, I'm not sure. Why women would be more in more financial denial? Uh, I, I I think there's kind of the societal uh, stereotype that that um, especially in a marriage that men can do the money, and maybe that's why I'm not sure. Lower levels of education, lower income, and lower net worth. I think that makes some sense. That. Potentially, the more educated I am, especially in money, the higher income I have and the higher net worth I have, probably the less chance that I've been in financial denial about something. Now, this isn't to say that you can't be high income, high net worth, high education and not be in financial uh, denial. It's just saying that according to the research that was done, those were the um, classifications that tended to be in higher denial than those of the opposite. Some other things about financial denial, a person that is in financial denial is more likely to also have compulsive buying behavior, gambling disorder, hoarding disorder, be a workaholic, be financially dependent on others that we talked about uh, in a previous podcast and be financially enabling somebody. Well, I mean, that can make some sense, right? If I'm addicted to gambling, there's probably some denial, right? That's going along with that. If, I mean, it's really possible to be aware, yeah, I'm addicted to gambling and to continue in that. But in I don't know how sustainable that is. Uh, being aware does not guarantee a change in behavior. We know that. But it uh, it would go hand in hand. Workaholism, you know. No, I'm not. I am not a workaholic. I'm da 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 da. So I think that makes some sense. So it, in all of these cases. Financial denial is helping us cope with these um, self-destructive behaviors. And we're coping by avoiding looking at financial reality. And why are we avoiding looking at financial reality? It's because it's so painful to be cons to consider that the reality could be true and there could be all sorts of difficult emotions associated with that because of all the different circumstances there could just be a huge amount of shame involved that if that's true then that means this of me that i am a failure i am bad or defective or 
I mean, just fill in the in the blanks. Those are the things that come up to me being a, a one personality on the Enneagram where the deepest fear is being corrupt or defective, right? So underlying all of that in, in IFS terms is this part of us that's been exiled, this wounded part of us that has had some type of financial trauma where we're not going there. That's what a coping mechanism is with a protector saying, well, the way not to trigger the vulnerability, the way not to trigger the pain, the shame, the guilt, the fear, you know, if this is true, then this means I've got to cut my spending in half or whatever that is. It's just to avoid it. It's just to say it doesn't exist. And again, if we turn to the Enneagram, maybe I should do a podcast on the Enneagram someday. The uh, nine personality is very much in line with denial. It's uh, kind of making up my own interior story of how the world is operating and numbing out to what reality is. Someone once uh, said that, that that type, it's like strapping a big pillow to them or wrapping themselves in bubble wrap. And, you know, nothing really can easily pierce that, um, that protection. So there are certain professions that are more vulnerable to financial denial than, uh, than others. When, and one of those professions would be uh, financial advisors. They were found to be significantly less likely to engage in financial denial behaviors than educators, business professionals, and mental health professionals. And uh, it makes a lot of sense that mental health professionals potentially be engaged in financial denial more. Business professionals, I have witnessed a lot of this in my career as a business appraiser, you know, just a financial planner of looking at the books of a business owner and just being blown away that of a glaring problem that's happening that the owner just did not want to really see. Um, which, I, I mean, a typical, a typical one is that the owner's borrowing, borrowing, borrowing to keep the business doors open. And when you look at everything out there, it's like, it's time to fold them. I think the, the Kenny Rogers song, know when to hold them and know when to fold them. And yet the pain of closing the doors and it just can be so overwhelming and fearful that no next month, next month, it, things will turn around. I mean, um, yeah, so it's, it's, uh, it's not um, crazy why uh, financial denial can um, be affecting these folks. So, and I, I mentioned mental health uh, professionals. I don't think it's any surprise when we look at what money script category would fall into financial denial more. We got money avoidance, money worship, money status, and money vigilant. Well, money avoidance scripts definitely fall into financial denial because it is avoiding, right? And that particular script holder is going to, there's a higher likely that they're going to be in financial denial than than those that hold other money scripts uh, that's because money is bad the world would just be a better place if we didn't have money it makes perfect sense why they would avoid that and money worship is the other category that more money will make all things better. All I, all I need is just a little more, a little more. All we need to do is hit this particular project or this particular deal and everything will be okay, right? Money worship says a little bit more money will solve all the problems. Uh, the money script category that's most um, negatively 
associated with financial denial is, of course, money vigilant. Money vigilants are typically awareness on steroids. Not only are they not denying, they can go to the other extreme of um, having a huge anxiety when the data would suggest everything was okay. So um, uh, that makes a lot of sense too. And I think the important thing to understand too is that financial denial can be an issue even for people who appear to be financially successful. You know, you can have a business person maybe worth millions of dollars running a, a business. They can get into uh, financial denial just for all the reasons that we've laid out and not be accepting of the truth that's that's right in front of them. So I, I think of the a story that that uh, we told in facilitating financial health about Patty. It was a, by all appearances a very successful young businesswoman. She made two hundred thousand dollars a year. She had savings of over five hundred thousand. Uh, can this be a any type of a problem? Well, she had a really tough relationship with money, and one of her secrets was that her mom, who used to manage her business, embezzled $400,000 from her. And talking about this in her family was absolutely forbidden. She was never taught how to manage money. She was taught that she was supposed to have it. So she worked really hard, but she never looked at the books never learned the financial side of the business. And that um, avoidance of looking at the books, knowing what was going on, gave her mom a complete opening to manipulate and steal from her. So obviously this was something that she denied for quite a while. This couldn't be. It couldn't be happening. No, something else is happening. Finally, when she came face to face that this couldn't no longer be denied, you know, the pain was really deep. And if you can't trust your own mother, who can you trust? And so this just really uh, compounded her doubt of herself. It was just uh, really paralyzing to her. So ever since that happened, she's been saving money regularly. She knows that probably putting money in the bank is not going to really help her for retirement, but she's scared to death to invest it. You know, it, it could disappear. The person I pick to invest it could it actually abscond with it? I just can't trust anybody around my money. So, you know, to an outside observer, she would appear to be financially successful. But just the uh, initial financial denial around needing to pay attention, not wanting to pay attention, and then having this happen at the hand of somebody she respected so much just has just put her in a place of being pretty tortured around her money relationship. Another form of denial around money is um, would be true of someone who's money avoidant, and that is um, money is not spiritual, and paying attention to money is not spiritual. Remember, the avoidance types believe that if you got rich, you probably got rich by taking advantage of other people. Underlying money avoidance is that money is bad. Money is evil. And so that makes perfectly perfect sense that paying attention to money would not be spiritual, would not be something that um, you, you want to be associated with. So 
of course, if, if, if I'm more spiritual, if I'm not paying attention to money, that is setting me up for all sorts of financial denial. The, the money script is that good people shouldn't care about money, that there is virtue in living with less money. Another one is this. I choose to live in the present. Everything is fine. Everything is taken care of. If I'm good, the universe will provide. So this belief is um, really looking at the fact that the, the foundation of money is dirty. It's unenlightened. It's evil. So, of course, if, they, if those are my underlying beliefs, it makes perfect sense that I would be financially avoidant or in financial denial. So, you know, we can then go through life with that particular uh, belief set, system, believing that we're really more evolved, we have much more serenity, because we pretend that money is of no concern to us. And actually, there's a term for that. It's called the spiritual escape. And it's a way where I'm not going to deal with it in front of me and the, and the pretext, the outward behavior that I'm showing is that of spirituality, that I am above that and I... I'm going to, oh, well, it's just a way of avoiding the pain, right? It's a way of avoiding the exile. It is an Enneagram type nine defense mechanism of having our own reality. So this is kind of a big deal. And some of you may not like that because it doesn't mean that every person that has spirituality or has a degree of enlightenment, is in financial denial. I mean, being present in most traditions really value being present, being really fully alive in the moment. If I am present, then I'm present to reality. I'm not in denial. And spiritual escape in and of itself is in denial is in avoiding. It's like, well, no, I'm going to avoid what is reality because that's going to mess up my alternative reality, right? I don't want to let that bring me down because it's not true. I hope this is making sense. So all of this, I think, is a way to avoid pain, a way to avoid therapy, which oftentimes is a lot more painful before there's any healing. But there can't be any healing if we don't look at reality and if we don't get in touch with the pain. Why? Because, again, underlying all of these protective coping mechanisms is a part of us we've exiled, is a part of us that we have cut off that we are not going to visit. Why? Because it's so painful. And unless we visit that part and really experience that pain and really connect with that part of us and uh, give it legitimacy for what it's feeling rather than trying to exclude it, cut it off, make it wrong, make it bad, uh, deny it, then things are not going to go well for us. So another example of financial denial would be, uh, say, an investor that has uh, a lot of losses, maybe from trading or investing in a single stock or, or some type of non-diversified portfolio. And oftentimes I'll hear them dismiss the loss that, well, it's only paper. It's only a paper loss. Well, yeah, I, <laughs> it's still a loss. 
if I sold my portfolio today, I would lose whatever that that amount is. Also, if I'm if I'm not diversified, there's there is the probability it's not coming back. And we can be in denial that, oh, it will come back, you know, and it doesn't matter what the stock, maybe it's GameStop or whatever the, the new craze is. It's only a paper loss. Well, it is a loss. You may not have realized the loss by selling it, but it's still a loss if you had to sell it. So there's all sorts of things how we can um, be in financial denial. So the, the key is that we want to become aware. And that an awareness is going, is going to produce more financial health. It just makes sense that if I am aware, if I'm dealing with reality, if I'm dealing with what's before me, if I am present to those facts, that I'm going to have a chance to change course, to react in a uh, helpful manner, and bring a better financial outcome. So many people wait until it's too late to come out of denial. So I hope that this has been helpful and appreciate your comments. Feel free to reach out to me at rick at rickkaler.com and uh, I'll look forward to talking to you again next week. So take care. Thanks for joining me, Rick Kaler, for another episode of Financial Therapy. It's not just about the money. This is where I combine the nuts and bolts of financial advice with the emotions that drive making them. Remember every financial behavior whether it appears illogical to you or others, makes perfect sense when we understand the underlying beliefs, feelings, and thoughts. Sign up for my weekly blog at financialawakenings.com. I hope you'll join me again for our next episode.